Hello, today we will discuss the accounting treatment of the transaction when the owner of a business makes a capital contribution. Firstly, we will determine whether the capital contribution is an asset, liability or equity. Secondly, we will discuss the effect of the transaction on the accounting equation, determining the account debited and the account credited. Thirdly, we will show you the source document for this transaction. Fourthly, we will determine in what subsidiary journal this transaction should be recorded. And lastly, we will show you how to record this transaction. Hello, I am Mr. Sitole, a qualified electrician. I decided to start a small service entity called BS Electrical. After opening a business bank account, I am now ready to deposit 100,000 as capital contribution into the account to start my business. I am super excited. Starting my own business has been a dream for a few years and at last I can make it happen. My first order of business is to deposit money into the business bank account. To do that, I will log into my internet banking and set up the business as a new, bene new beneficiary on my personal account. The next step is to do an electronic funds transfer. I will transfer 100,000. Upon completion of the payment, I will receive an internet banking notice of payment from my bank via email. Mrs. S. Peterson, the newly appointed bookkeeper for my business will issue me a receipt for the capital contribution. She will give me the original receipt and keep the duplicate receipt for the accounting records of BS Electric. Equity can be defined as the amount of money or the value of the assets the owner of a business invested in the business. It is therefore an indication of how much the investment of the owner is worth. When you hear or read about the net worth of an owner, it is the value of the equity that they refer to. Equity can be calculated by adding the capital contribution of the owner and the income generated by the business together and then deducting the drawings made by the owner and the expenses incurred by the business. All transactions are recorded by applying the double entry system. The logical way to record these transactions can be explained by way of the accounting equation. The equation states that equity equals assets minus liabilities. This is a mathematical equation and should always be in balance. This means, means that for each transaction you will need two entries to ensure that the equation stays in balance. If we apply this to our example of a capital contribution, it means that our equity will increase by 100,000 Rand. In order to keep our equity in balance, we will need another entry. Since we receive the 100,000 Rand, our bank account will increase. Bank is an asset and therefore if we increase equity by 100,000 Rand on the one side of the equation and assets on the other side, our equation will stay in balance. The rule for equity is that it increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side. This means that in our example we will credit capital since it forms part of equity. The rule for assets are that they increase on the debit side and decreases on the credit side. In our example we will therefore debit the bank account with 100,000 Rand. After receiving the capital contribution, Mrs. Peterson, the bookkeeper of BS Electrical, will issue a receipt as proof that the money was received. She will give the original document to Mr. Satole and keep the duplicate receipt as proof for the recording of the transaction in the accounting records of the business. Financial accounting is the systematic recording of transactions. Subsidiary journals, also known as books of first entry, are the starting point for recording any transaction that took place. The source document for the transaction contains all the information needed. Mr. Satoli deposited cash as, as a capital contribution into the business bank account. Whenever the business receives cash, the cash receipts journal will be used to record the transaction. The cash receipts journal consists of different columns. 
Each column has a heading and these headings will depend on the type of entity and the frequency of different kinds of receipts. All cash receipts journals will have a column for the document number, the day, details of the transaction, analysis, analysis of receipts, bank and sundry accounts. Other accounts, for example sales, services rendered and that output can also be created depending on the entity and the frequency of the transactions. All the information we need to complete the entry found on the duplicate receipt. Firstly, we enter the document number R0001 that can be found in the upper left corner of the receipt. According to the receipt, the date of the transaction was 2 January 2017, therefore we enter the day as this the second. In the details column, we will enter the name of the person or business that made the payment. In this case, it was Mr. Satole. The amount of money we received was 100,000 Rand and we will first enter the amount in the analysis of receipts column and then in the amount column under sundries since we do not have a separate column for capital contributions. In the details column under sundries accounts, we will enter the name of the affected account, namely capital. At the end of the day, after all the receipts for that day were entered, we'll add all the amounts in the analysis of receipt column and only enter the total receipts for that day in the after watching this presentation, you should now know that capital can be classified as equity. When the capital contribution is made by way of a cash deposit, we will debit the bank account and credit the capital account. The business will issue a receipt when the money is received. The original doc document will be given to the person that made the deposit and the business will keep a duplicate for its own records. All cash receipts will be entered in the cash receipts journal.